Hello scholars, welcome back to the Kemet Masai Academy. Today we're going to be looking at set notation, which has to do with the symbols that we use in sets. Now, we have several videos on this channel in which we feature different aspects of sets. Feel free to check the playlist the grade 4 playlist, grade 5 playlist, and for those who are doing sets at a higher level, from grade 7 up, we have videos um, that feature sets at that level as well. So in every field, you know, we have symbols that we use to represent certain terms. They are, they are like shortcut methods. Right, so the, the individuals that are engaged in that field, they know the, the, the symbols and they can just go straight to them and they understand what is being said. So it's, it's like speed writing, like shorthand, shortcut methods. So instead of writing out these long-winded phrases and terms, we can just go straight to symbols. And mathematics is one of those subjects that uses a wide range of symbols. So we're going to learn today what are the symbols that are used when we are writing um, information about sets, what is set notation, set builder notation, and so we can be versed, we can communicate with each other using these symbols without having to write out a whole ton load of words. Before I go any further, I would like to urge you to subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed, now would be an excellent time to do so. Also, share this video so other students may benefit from the information just as you are benefiting. When you share the video, when you subscribe and encourage others to subscribe, what you cause to happen is the video becomes more accessible to other students, the, the video becomes more visible when they are searching. So just do me a favor, subscribe and share the video. So let's go, let's, let's look at what are these symbols that are used when we're talking about sets. Let's look at um, some definitions first. A set, as you may know by now if you have been following the videos on sets, just a reminder, a set is a group of things that share a common trait. They have at least one thing in common. They might have other elements, other, other features in common, but at least one thing brings them together. And so we can have a set of books. We can even make it more defined, a set of mathematics books, a set of language books, a set of cars, a set of students, and so on. A set must be distinct and well-defined, right? So it can't be vague, it's also must not be relative and should not depend on preferences or personal perspectives, personal opinions. So we, sh we do not want to talk about a set of um, boys in the class who are strong. That is not well defined because I might think this boy is strong and you might say, no, he's weak. I, I don't think he's strong. Right, so we don't want to use relative terms when we're talking about set. We want to define them. We can set a definition to say, all right, boys who are able to lift this chair can be classified as strong. If we agree on that, then that is a definition. The set is then defined and we can progress from there. But we want to avoid using those relative terms that people would argue about the definition of. A capital letter is usually used to name the set and a set can be listed or it can just be described. Now this is a Venn diagram 
it is used to represent sets <coughs> sorry so we have the universal set which is all the elements being considered and we have the different sets which capital letters are used to name those sets here we have two sets intersecting they overlap each other that means the elements here are in both of the sets here we have two sets that are not intersecting we say that these sets are disjoint these two particular sets have no special trait in common but they are except that they are part of the universal set here we have three sets overlapping and we could even have more sets overlapping so those in the middle right here would be elements that are common to all three sets these would be common to just these two and so on here we have a special case of intersection where this set is a subset of this one whenever the elements in one set are contained within another set we say that this is a subset of the bigger group so here are the symbols that are used element not an element so when a, an item is an element of a set we use this symbol if it's not an element we use this one this of course the capital u is used to represent the universal set sets are named using capital letters and this n here means the number of elements in that set so we actually would count the elements and get the cardinality given a cardinal number a counting number for the elements in that set this is the symbol for intersection so where the two sets overlap we say a intersect b this is the symbol we use when we want to list all the members of a and b combined we use the union this is the union of the sets. This stroke at the top of a set means the complement or what is not an element of that set. So A complement means the elements that are not a part of A, not contained within A. If two sets are disjoint, for example these two, they do not overlap we say that their intersection is the empty set or the null set and these two symbols are used to represent the empty or null set if the sets are disjoint, disjoint then their intersection is the empty set however their union can still be listed subsets we have two types of subsets we have a regular subset and proper subset in this case the elements, the, the two sets can be equal. I mean, everything in, in one set is the exact same elements in another set. And in this subset, that's like this one, where so, this set contains elements that are part of the bigger one, but there are also elements outside that this set does not have. Right? So this might have three elements and this might have ten elements. In this case, they both would have the exact same three elements. All right, so quickly, we can list the members of a set or we can just describe the members. The listing methods, for example, set A, vowels in the English alphabet. So we would list A, E, I, O, and U. Those are the vowels in the English alphabet. So here, this is the description, vowels in the English alphabet. We are defining it, specifically defining, describing the set. It's well defined and we're listing them. If we wanted the number of elements in that set, we would count. So the number in A would be one, two, three, four, five elements. Set B, months that start with the letter J. What are the months that start with the letter J? So we'd have June and July. 
if we wanted the cardinality, the number of elements in that set, it would be 2. Now, using set notation, we can describe the sets this way. So this is the set of elements in set A, right, such that x is an ele x is a is a whole number or is an element of the set of whole numbers where x is greater than 3 but less than or equal to 9 so we list all the elements that are more than 3 going up to 9 because it's less than or equal to we would include the 9 so that's 3 sorry so that's 4 5 6 7 8 9 those are the elements of this set, right? So it's a set of x, so that x is an element of whole numbers that are greater than 3, less than or equal to 9. And this is the um, set of elements in P, such that x is an element of the natural numbers or counting numbers greater than or equal to 5 and less than 10. So in this case, we would include the 5, but we would not include the 10. So you'd have to look if it has the equal sign in addition to the greater than or less than. If it, if it has the equal sign, you would include that element. So that would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We don't include the 10. It's less than 10. So these are the basic symbols used in set notation, set builder notation. And you have to become familiar with these if you're going to understand um, how sets are written and described. So if you have benefited from this video, again, let me urge you, subscribe, share the videos, tell your friends about it, and drop some comments to let me know what you think about the video. Or just to say thank you, miss, my beloved scholars, I will see you in the next video.